I'm Starborn. Remember, to be a star, you have to shine your own light, follow your own path, not be afraid of the darkness, because that's when stars shine brightest. And, in fact, we're going to be talking about where the stars or the planets are positioned right now, because if you've been looking at my website, starborninstitute.org, you'd already know that the title of tonight is A Hefty Reward. Or I could have called it um, an honorable award. And why is that? It's for a job well done. And you could be looking forward to that, or you could know someone else who can be receiving a rather hefty award or some uh, recognition for a job well done. Because there are now, today, six planets in a powerful grand trine among the Earth signs. There have been as many as five, but today there are six. And the Earth signs do rule a practical reality and hard work and your investments and the rewards that you uh, receive for doing that hard work. So today we have Jupiter and Uranus and the exalted moon all in Taurus. In fact, Uranus the planet of sudden surprising change, which is in a fixed sign, Taurus, and it's a financial sign. Now that Uranus is at 23 degrees and it's conjuncting that exalted moon in um, Taurus, and that is at the 29th degree of fate. So the moon is moving right into Gemini. <clears throat> It'll be there tomorrow. But for right now, these three powerful planets are also trining uh, Mars and Mercury, and Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, and they are both in Virgo, and they are conjuncting. So they're, a conjunction means that uh, both planets have sort of double the power they have by themselves when they're conjuncting. So that's going on, and those five planets are all being trined by Pluto, which is retrograding Capricorn, also at the 29th degree of fate. So actually, the exalted moon at 29 degrees of Taurus is precisely trying Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Capricorn rules your 10th house of career, and it rules rewards that you earn the hard way over a long period of time, so it rules pension funds as well. And it rules your public reputation. And so those things can be highlighted because Pluto is at the 29th degree of fate, but that hefty reward perhaps could be coming your way or someone else's way because that planet is trining all those three planets in Taurus and the two in Virgo, but it's precisely trining the exalted moon in Taurus. And the exalted moon in Taurus would rule high-priced real estate or commercial real estate or things that are very expensive. And so that's why I'm calling the show a hefty reward because it could be represent something of great value or a lot of money. And it could be maybe because you've been working for a long time and you have a good retirement that you could perhaps draw on now. There are different reasons, though, why people can uh, be coming into a hefty reward or some honorable recognition for a job well done. <clears throat> and the first reason is just the very most obvious one. It's because they're retiring. Well, fine. It's a retirement that perhaps should have happened before. And that's because Pluto, which represents people in upper management, in large corporations, government agencies, or institutions, that Pluto is retrograde. And um, so what that means is it Pluto's coming back over ground it's already covered before, and since it's at the 29th degree of fate in a sign that rules a career, perhaps this time around it's a career ending, uh, but with a hefty reward connected to it, which is pretty great, and perhaps it should have happened before. So retirement is something that people can be really looking forward to, and it, does, it only means the end of one career. It doesn't mean that it's the ending of everything somebody wants to do, because often people retire from one thing, and then they go do what they've always wanted to do. Maybe they'll open a new business of their own, or maybe they'll pursue a hobby that they've always loved. Uh, that's, or maybe they'll travel, who knows? A 
secondary reason why somebody can be coming into a hefty reward due to some career ending that's going on right now is due to a health reason. It can be that someone has uh, contracted some sort of health impairment. And so uh, the doctor says, hey, you better retire. <laughs> so they decide to do that. Or it can just be that they may be in a career that requires um, great physical strength or endurance. And uh, due to some sort of impairment, maybe they can't quite do everything anymore. And that is why they can be ending that career. Doesn't mean they're ending every career in their life, but at least one of them. Another kind of health impairment could be severe mental anguish. And that is because Mercury is in the mental sign that it rules, Virgo. And Mars is there as well, and they are both opposing two planets in Pisces that are, that are really um, opposing and fighting each other. So there can be some sort of mental strain or stress that someone could have been going through that might have affected their work. And so maybe, once again, they're just thinking, hey, <laughs> this is too much, so I'm just going to leave. And it doesn't mean they're not going to have another career or start their own business, but maybe they need to take a little break. And so they could say, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with this. <laughs> and so I a physical impairment or some severe mental anguish uh, due to health conditions could lead to something where the, a career is ending now. A third reason why there could be some sort of career ending but a hefty reward or some great recognition uh, coming anyway is because there are people that have um, uh, very uh, different viewpoints um, even divergent viewpoints, and they, they are sort of irreconcilable. Okay, and it can be that perhaps an employer is taking a stance or um, in a, into politics or something where they're doing something that somebody who's been working for them for a long time just doesn't agree with anymore. And so they have irreconcilable differences that are somewhat philosophical. These are philosophical differences. It isn't, it, it isn't a question of whether the employer is a good employer or a bad one, but maybe they're just going down a different path. And, um, and the, a worker is saying, I don't want to go down that path because I have different viewpoints. And so these are irreconcilable differences that can be based on philosophical attitudes. And so that means that whoever is leaving can be leaving for what they consider are very good personal reasons of their own. And, um, and that's, that's fine. Uh, they could have been a good hard worker and getting a hefty reward anyway. And the fourth reason is a reason I think that is more common than most people realize. And the fourth reason why there can be uh, a hefty reward coming, but it can be ending a career at the same time is because people have very different views about money and either about why they're earning it or how to earn it or else how to spend it. And because they have very different views, um, they can be challenged right now uh, to a degree that is um, pretty intense. And th the way I'll explain this is that today Venus is at 23 degrees of Leo and it is precisely square Uranus which is at 23 degrees of Taurus, a fixed financial sign. And Leo is also a fixed sign. But Uranus rules uh, Aquarius, it rules sudden surprising change and it's in a financial sign so the value of investments which is what Taurus rules can be sort of fluctuating going up and down at any time but Uranus also rules since it rules Aquarius it rules the humanitarian and so somebody who has a lot of money could be saying that their attitude or their theory or their the, what they want to do with their money is a fund um, humanitarian interests in a way that will help people and uh, particularly people that are needy and and so they could say well 
I have the money and that's what I want to do with it. And I earned it. And so uh, their attitude is a humanitarian attitude. And they could even um, invest in corporations or organizations that are also helping humanity. And so that would be fine with them. But the person that it could be represented by Venus and Leo, well, Leo rules um, parties and it rules fun. <laughs> and it rules horse racing and it rules gambling. And so another person could be saying, well, that isn't what I want to do with my money. What I want to do with my money is, hey, let the good times roll. And so and they could want to be sort of self-indulgence and want to spend it on whatever makes them happy. Well, that's human. Most people like to do that. Or they like to just take gambles. Or they have very expensive tastes. Leo rules extravagance. And so they could have the attitude that they want money and more of it. And in somewhere in their, some time in their life, they could have had a cleverly disguised business plan to, to try to get their hands on as much money as they could. You know, money and more of it. But it isn't to do anything except let the good times roll, or gamble, or have fun, or, or buy extravagant things. <laughs> and so these two people, as depicted by Venus at 23 degrees of Leo and Uranus at 23 degrees of Taurus, have very different attitudes about money. And so that could create some sort of career ending now. Um, and, and so it, it's because they really don't, they don't view money or how to handle money or how to make money the same way or for the same reason. And so uh, somebody could just decide, oh, it's time to move on. This isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm going to move on. And so they get a hefty reward. Okay, so I'm, no matter what reason a person has now for ending a career, and it doesn't mean it's their last career, it's just the career they've had for a while, whatever reason they have, um, they're still going to get a hefty reward, or they're going to get some honorable recognition for a job well done. And yet everything, generally in life, has a cost to it. And the cost this time around isn't really the money. It, it is the loss of a career. And it's also the fact that whatever public reputation they had built up during their career is going to fade right along with the end of the career. So that's a cost. But then we have to be realistic and realize that you can't have everything. And uh, the one who's got the hefty reward coming or the honorable award or recognition for a job well done, you know, they're going to be happy with that. And uh, this grand trine with six planets in it, it's just unbeatable. <laughs> so particularly if it should have happened before, this time with two planets at the 29th degree of fate trining each other, that hardly ever happens and Pluto being retrograde in Capricorn and trining the exalted moon in Taurus also at 29 degrees. There's good money around, but it is going to entail the end of a career as well, for whatever reason. Okay, what does this mean to all 12 of the sun signs? Hmm, Aries. You know, Aries, you could be looking at something like that. For whatever reason you have, you may be wanting to end a career or, or it might be that you have something better in mind that you'd like to start up. Venus and uh, the Sun are in Leo trining your Sun. And so, and you have the lucky North Node in your sign. So you may just decide, hey, this is a time when I want to, I don't want to work quite so hard for somebody else. Maybe, maybe you want to work for yourself, Aries. And uh, why not? And you may also get a hefty reward for whatever work you have been doing in one career, but you may also be thinking very seriously about changing careers or about uh, not working, say, not full-time, but maybe only part-time. Or you could have a health impairment and you just need to take some time off and, and you know, attend to that. So um, 
whatever your reasons are for starting something new, Aries, I think they're well justified. And I think that you're going to be able to go ahead. So if you are ending one career, Aries, for whatever reason, there could be with three planets in Taurus right ahead of your sun sign. And they, they're all really good planets. Uh, there could be a hefty reward around somewhere. Either through your own pension that you may have built up or from some sort of honorable award or recognition for a job well done. So if you're thinking of moving on to something new, Aries, boy, that is exactly what you should be doing. So good luck. What does it mean to a Taurus? Hmm, Taurus. Well, it could hardly get better than six planets and Earth signs all trining each other, Taurus. Uh, so you're looking at money somewhere in one way or another. And it can be that uh, if you're the kind of person, you have a Uranus in your sun sign, which is, remember, a planet that rules Aquarius, and Aquarius rules the humanitarian. It can be that you want to use some of your investments. Maybe their value is fluctuating. You might be deciding to sell some investments or buy some other investments. You might want to use um, the money that you've made for some humanitarian cause. Or it might just be that you want to use that uh, some extra money somewhere as an investment in your own future and you know sort of putting the the money on your own nose which is good if you are um, really ready to end a career and you're not thinking of starting anything new it may be that this is a time when you're thinking of how to make um, financial bequests and it might be to humanitarian organizations or it might be a way of setting up investments or property uh, to benefit family members. Uh, so whatever it is, Taurus, uh, at the very least, I think that you can be involved in something that involves high-priced real estate because Jupiter is in your sign. It's going to be there for um, uh, almost a year. And uh, so there can, and the exalted moon in your sign at the 29th degree of fate does involve high-priced real estate or things that are high-priced. And it might be if you own something, you could sell it at a pretty good price right now, Taurus. And maybe that would be a good idea. Maybe the extra money would, you know, help you move in a new direction, which I think you'd love. Uh, Taurus is always a good hard worker, so no question about them being able to work real hard. It's just that you may have different priorities in your life now. And you may decide that, you know, time is a priority. And, and if there's only 24 hours in a day and you can't do everything you want, then you might have to give up something. But uh, that's your choice. And you could be capable of making a very wise choice right now. So uh, trust your own judgment, Taurus, as you move forward. And even if it involves one career ending, that isn't the end of all the careers in your life. Uh, you, you can still, depending on what your priorities are, you could pick up something later on that you're uh, very well, very interested in as well. So uh, I think this is a very good time for you, Taurus. And uh, it's time to make a, a wise decision about something and, um, and do your best. And uh, Taurus usually provides well for their loved ones. So... Try to think about that while the stars are really with you. Okay, what does it mean to a Gemini? Hmm, Gemini. Well, Gemini, this is a time when I think that uh, with so many planets and Earth signs, uh, there's got to be something that's a little lacking, and it's the air signs again. Darn it. And so, Gemini, you're, you're almost going to be able to sort of sit back and relax right now and not have to worry about too many things. Uh, last week's full moon in Aquarius did trine your sun. So uh, you could have been doing some very um, good thinking about your future plans. You could even be not sure what exactly all your future plans are, but you could have realized that you do have a a bright future even if you can't see the whole thing right now and that this would be a good time to prepare for it and it really would be uh, Gemini you've got a ton of planets right behind your sign three of them Jupiter Uranus and 
the exalted moon are all in Taurus right behind your sun. But as of tomorrow, the moon's going to be in your sign. And, uh, <clears throat> and so it's going to be squaring Mercury and Mars in Virgo. And then it will be uh, squaring Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. There could be a health issue that you need to get a little bit more serious about, Gemini. And this would be an excellent time to really make sure that you're in tip-top shape as you go forward. Because uh, even if you say you're not planning on a bright future, it is just going to land on your doorstep in about two to two and a half years, Gemini. And you're going to be way more busy than you think right now. And so you got to get in your best shape for that. And so this would be a good time to prepare for the future. Even if you don't know what's in that future, just be at your best, Gemini. And this is a good time to quietly do that. Okay, what does it mean to be Cancer? Hmm, Cancer. Well, Cancer, uh, there are the, still Saturn and uh, Neptune in Pisces, which are trining your sun, and that simply means that that precious dream that you've had for a long time, as long as you keep working on it, Cancer, it is aspected to succeed. You just have to sort of put your heart into it, Cancer. Now this is a good time to do that because somewhere in your life there's going to be uh, somebody making a career change. And um, it could because it could be because they've done a good job, but they're done with that. <laughs> and they could have different reasons for that. And so, uh, because Pluto at the 29th degree of fate in Capricorn is opposing your sun sign. It can be that you want to make a decision about some sort of career change. Now, it may not be a complete career change for you, but it could involve um, other people who are making changes uh, in management positions around you. And <clears throat> you'd have to sort of wait and see how that shapes up, uh, Cancer. In the meantime, you, your highest priority should be to work on that precious dream of yours. One, because you've had it a long time, so there's no time to waste. You've got to get going on it uh, because, you know, time marches on <laughs> and we have to go with it. So, you know, day by day, we all get a little older. <laughs> and so this is the time to make a dream come true, Cancer, uh, particularly since you have Neptune and Saturn trining your sun. Saturn is a planet of stability and it rules time and it rules old age because it rules Capricorn and that's what Capricorn rules. But it's trining your sun. So if you were going to prepare for how you want to spend the rest of your life, you would have the help of that Saturn in Pisces and you would have the help of Neptune in Pisces. Now, Neptune is at 27 degrees of Pisces. It's not going to stay forever, but both of these planets will be in Pisces for a few more years. And so, you know, take advantage of the solid support they're giving you, Cancer, um, because there's no time like the present for you to develop and nurture your own happiness. Cancer is the sign of nurturing. But when's the last time you did something good for yourself, Cancer? Cancers are so busy taking care of other people most of the time, or other causes, or other other things around them, and they and they they're so nurturing they just do it. Um, but if you're doing that at the price of your own happiness, you might you might regret that someday. So it's it's just that. You have these two planets that once they leave, Saturn will be back in 28 years to Pisces, but not before that. And Neptune won't ever be back in Pisces in our lifetimes because it's really a slow mover. And so um, realize, realize that even if you can't necessarily see that strong support behind you, it's there, Cancer. And uh, it's going to stay there but not forever. And so you need to maybe shift your priorities a little bit and work on a precious dream that is destined to succeed. But 
The question is when. And I would say the sooner the better while you have this staunch support training your son. Because it, it won't stay there. So you sort of have to strike while well, iron is hot, cancer. Try to, try to think about that. There's nothing wrong with making yourself happy. Because actually if people don't do that, then um, they're a little bit crippled by their own unhappiness holding them down. And that's not the way people are supposed to live. So let that go, Cancer, and work on that pet precious dream, whatever it is. Because uh, you have to think you're worth it, and so is the dream. So go to it. Okay, what does it mean to a Leo? Hmm, Leo. Well, your sign is certainly activated, and that is because it's a fixed sign. And there are five planets in fixed signs right now. Two of them are in your sign. So the sun, your own ruler, which can make you feel very confident right now, which is good. You can have a lot of good ideas right now, Leo. And that sun and Venus are both in your sign. And Venus is at the 23rd degree. And it's retrograde in your sign. And so you need to sort of go back and decide about something that has to do with money. Leo, and that is because that Venus and your, the Sun, but particularly Venus, are squaring Jupiter and Uranus. They're squaring, Venus is squaring Uranus exactly at 23 degrees, both of them. And 23 is a number that reduces to five, and it's like the five fingers of your hand. Five is a scattering number. It's the number of Gemini, and the reason why is because Geminis are very happy. Gemini rules part-time work or, t or temporary or part-time efforts. They can do more than one thing. It's the sign of the twins. And so these two planets, Venus and Uranus, are both at 23 degrees, which reduces to 5. And it means that you could have been scattering your forces. And, and you know, this planet is retrograde now. You're getting a chance to go back and decide what you really want to do about a financial matter and it's important to for you to decide what to do and your decision is not going to match up with somebody else's decision Uranus and Taurus is is not going to handle money the way Venus and Leo is going to mainly because your sign rules extravagance <laughs> and so um, so Leo you have to decide how to handle a situation involving your own ideas about money. And generally a Leo likes money and more of it. <laughs> and so, uh, and there's, you know, Leo rules gambling too, and horse racing, and sports. You know, lots of things to spend your money on. Uh, but there is going to be a challenge to that, and you are going to have to sort of surmount the challenge in one way, or, or answer the challenge in one way or another. So you may decide that you have a very different idea about what you want to do with your money compared to what somebody else wants to do, and that could involve a change in your career. But you may have a good reason for that, Leo. And, and changing your career, uh, Venus is in your sign and so is the sun. I would give that more thought. Um, you have good planets in your sun sign. They're just being challenged. But, um, you know... Leo's a sign of leadership. You, you should be doing what you think is going to be best for you going forward. And, um, and I don't think it's going to agree with what somebody else, somebody else's attitude about money. But you shouldn't feel bad about that. I mean, your ideas are valid too. And so um, realize that you may be at a, a point where one career ends, but that doesn't mean that you can't be starting up another one which could actually make you happier. Venus is a really good planet to have in a person's sun sign. You know, happiness counts because <laughs> Venus rules that. So I give it a lot of thought right now, Leo. And if you have to end something in order to be happier, um, that's a pretty good reason to end something. I think I think people should try to make themselves happier because this is a world that isn't very happy 
And so if we don't try to make ourselves happy, no one else is going to do it for us. And so that's why you've sort of got to take the lead and, and do what you think is right for you, Leo. And good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Virgo? Well, Virgo. This is a time, Virgo, <clears throat> when remember, nothing beats a grand trine. And this is a really big grand trine, six planets. Now, tomorrow, after the moon moves on, there will only be five. But so what, Virgo? You're, you're being blessed by having Jupiter, Uranus, and the exalted moon in Taurus all trining your sun. So there could be a hefty reward coming your way. It may be an investment that's worth a lot more right now, and maybe you want to sell it. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Or it can simply be that you're ending a career because you're, you're ready to take advantage of money that you've put away in your pension for a long time. Well, why not? It's your money. And then Pluto in Capricorn, which is retrograde at the 29th degree of fate, is also trining your sun, Virgo. And I would say since there's two planets that are at the 29th degree of fate and they both trine each other, and that is Saturn in um, Capricorn trining the exalted moon in Taurus. It, it simply means that, um, that some serious issue that either involves your work, that's what Virgo rules, rules our jobs and our work and occupations that are of service to others. Uh, pardon the sirens, sorry about that. And, and Capricorn rules careers and Taurus rules investments and, and working very hard. So uh, Virgos are very steady, and uh, they like to finish things. Uh, and even if they don't like what they're doing, they're going to finish it. Because generally, a Virgo will look around at some point, and he'll, they'll ask themselves, well, where did everybody else go? And that's because, you know, there could be a hard job that's got to get done, but other people sort of leave after a while. And there's the Virgo still working away, making sure that it's finished. And you know, you may have done that enough in your life, Virgo, that um, maybe, maybe you figure that you've paid your dues and you've worked hard. And so maybe you're gonna to wanna to redo your investments in order to have a career change where you don't have to work quite that hard. You know, the, the thing that money does is that either you work for it or it works for you. That's it. And so you might want to take some money and invest it in a way that it's giving you enough income where you don't have to work so hard anymore. And um, you may be able to do that. Your sign rules banking, it rules accounting, you're good with numbers. Um, you may, you may not make an obvious choice that someone would expect you to make, but you could make one that was, would be very financially rewarding. And it, particularly if you sat down and thought about it, Virgo, you know, put a pencil to it. So I wish you luck on that because nothing beats a grand trine. This is exactly the right time. If your money is not working as hard as it could for you, that you ought to be thinking about how to make that happen because it could right now. So uh, good luck, and uh, somewhere around there's the possibility of a hefty reward or recognition for a job well done coming to you, Virgo. Congratulations. Okay, what does it mean to a Libra? Hmm, Libra. Well, Libra, once again, there aren't any planets in air signs, but last week's full moon in Aquarius trined your sun, and um, that means that you, you would have had some opportunity to start thinking about doing new things in the future or with someone new in the future. Um, and uh, Libras are, um, they sort of like to be part of a group. Uh, they're, they're very, they're very um, compatible with a lot of different people. And that's because your sign is ruled by Venus, Libra. And uh, Venus rules charm. And uh, Libras are loaded with charm. <laughs> and um, oddly enough, I don't think that a Libra realizes uh, how effective their charm is. I, I, I think Leos, they're sort of born with it. And so growing up, they could just take it for granted and don't realize 
First of all, how many people really like to see you coming, Libra? <laughs> they do. Because you usually have a smile on your face and uh, you, you, you fit in well with others. And it doesn't, even if you have perhaps critical ideas about other people, it doesn't show on you. You could have your own opinions inside, but you are still rather charming to everybody. Um, your sign rules peace, compromise, uh, it rules the law. And so, uh, Libra, you might have had a chance under last year, last week's full moon in Aquarius, which trined your sun. You may have had a chance to start thinking about what you really want to do in the future. And this is a good time for you to be quietly thinking about that. And I mean sort of thinking hard about it. Because uh, there, are, there aren't any planets in air signs. And so it's, it's sort of like you can take a time out or you can take a breather right now, Libra, and start thinking, just ask yourself, what would make me happy? What would I rather be doing? And who would I like to be with? And um, have a little conversation with yourself, Libra, and come up with some answers that, that you know are true ones. And then you can decide, you know, sort of which way to go in your future. You could decide that at a later date when there are more planets in air signs. That would be fine. But maybe you just need to sit down and have a little honest heart-to-heart -heart talk with yourself right now and ask yourself what would make you happy. It could be something different than what you used to think. So, you know, we all grow and change. So why don't you think about that a little bit? A little heart-to-heart -heart talk with yourself, Libra. Wouldn't hurt. And uh, besides, I don't think people can be happy unless they know what makes them happy. So not a bad idea to think about that right now. Okay, what does it mean to a Scorpio? Hmm, Scorpio. Well, Scorpio, you, just like Cancer, really do still benefit from the fact that Neptune, the ruler of Pisces, is in that sign, and Saturn is there as well. <clears throat> They're both retrograde right now, and that means that if you were going to work on making a precious dream come true, it's not a new dream, it's an old one. Saturn rules time, you know, and Neptune rules dreams. And so you could have had a dream around for a long time, Scorpio. And since your sign rules secrecy, I'm not so sure you told anybody about that, Scorpio. But there, you have the support of those two planets. They're retrograde, meaning that if you haven't succeeded, at making that dream come true yet. you got to go back and try it again, Scorpio. And the reason why is that the planets are retrograde, which means they're going back over their orbits and picking up more information. And that can help you as well. Maybe, maybe you just need to zero in a little bit more on a fond dream of yours. And if something has not it, it is aspected for success. So if something hasn't worked, uh, why don't you go back and either try something again, only, only a, a little more of it, or a little harder, or something where you just make an extra effort, um, because it's still aspected for su success, but it's not going to fall in your lap because Saturn is there. And Saturn is a planet of hard work. So even for a dream, you got to sort of work at it, Scorpio. And um, uh, probably you need to ask yourself what it's worth to you. And if it's, uh, if it's worth a lot, then it's all right to concentrate on that. And, you know, yours is a fixed sign. And uh, fixed signs are very determined. And if something hasn't worked, it doesn't mean it, it can't work. It just means it didn't work at one time. It, but it could still work while these two planets are backing you up. So just remember, even though there are planets still, five of them in the fixed signs, because the Sun and Venus and Leo are squaring your Sun, and Jupiter, Uranus, and the exalted Moon in Taurus are opposing your Sun sign. Okay, you're facing challenges. Some of them could be financial challenges. And some of them could be a difference of opinion about what to do with money. 
And um, so Scorpio, you just have to look over your money a little bit more closely. And um, I don't think that the, I don't think the precious dream really has much to do with money. But they say time is money. And if you're spending all your time making money, when are you going to have any time left to make the dream come true? See, you know, the question is, when does the dream come true? Not if it's going to come true. It will. But it's going to take work. So you have to spend some time on that, Scorpio. I think whatever dream you have, which I think you haven't told very many people about, um, it, it actually... It doesn't have anything to do with money. It has something to do with survival. The things that your sign cares about, you know, survival, justice, um, strength of will, determination, um, loyalty. Um, and and the ability of somebody or of your dream to always rise above the problems in life and keep going. So, so in a way, the dream has an intrinsic value. And, and I don't know how you measure it because it doesn't have, you can't measure it with money. It would have the intrinsic value of always helping you rise higher and higher which generally a person can't do all by themselves. It does, it does take the dream. So I hope you work on that. Okay, what does it mean to a Sagittarian? Well, Sagittarius. This is a time, Sagittarius, when since yours is a mutable sign, there can be people around you with what you might call irreconcilable differences they would love to take their anguish out on anybody that's around. So you have to remember that you are vulnerable to people who are disagreeing with each other and just want to sort of dump on anybody they see. And just make sure that's not you, Sagittarius. Because your mutable sign, your own, and the Gemini sign are being squared by Saturn and Neptune in Pisces and by Mercury and Mars in Virgo, and those two planets are conjuncting each other closely. And so, um, you know, there is somebody around you, Sagittarius, that is, um, they are suffering some sort of mental anguish. Now, they might have a physical impairment as well, but they have definitely a health problem. And it, I think it is somewhat unmanageable at the moment. Mars is an, is an aggressive, demanding, uh, harmful planet. You know, it rules war. And so um, it's squaring your sun. And so is Mercury. You could get some news that if you, you're a fire sign. Fire signs like to act quickly. You could get some news. And if you act on it real fast, it would be to your detriment. So whatever that news is, even if you think you've got to do something about it right away, I would, I would pause, Sagittarius, just step back and pause, and realize you might be walking into some sort of trap. Or you might be walking into a problem you didn't cause, and somebody just wants to take it out on the nearest victim, and that could be you. And that is why you, you really need to step back now. Because there are people with irreconcilable differences because there's two planets in Pisces coming up against two planets in Virgo, and they're clashing. They don't agree. They're not ever going to agree. They're just clashing. And, and so if you walk into the middle of it, you're going to get hit on both sides. And it might be that you didn't even intend that, but it could happen to you. And that is why you need to pull back right now, Sagittarius. The sun and Venus in Leo are trining your sun. You might want to go out and have a jolly old time, you know, and, and enjoy parties and summer fun. Well, you could do that, but I would do that with a little safety precaution around you, Sagittarius. Uh, don't be in the wrong place at the wrong time.
because people who could be very harmful to you could be around you and uh, they they would they would not think anything about it if they hurt you they wouldn't they wouldn't even bother to think about it so it's up to you to pull back right now just stay out of the fray sagittarius let these let these this huge opposition of these two planets pass you by same thing for gemini just just let all the people that are arguing pass you by. They don't have your best interests in heart at all anyway. They aren't even thinking about you. So stay away. Be happy by yourself, Sagittarius. You have a very good mind. So uh, think good thoughts. Okay, what does it mean to a Capricorn? Well, Capricorn... Gee, it doesn't get better than six planets in a grand trine in Earth signs, Capricorn. Wow. Uh, so it, it, if you haven't ended your career, you could sure be thinking about it. And if you have ended a career already, you could be thinking about the pension funds or the retirement funds or some investments that you've made. Or you could be uh, considering uh, the condition of your health in one way or another. All of that would be rather favorable right now. So if you did have a health problem, uh, maybe just go get a checkup and, and you, you probably get a clean bill of health right now. Uh, or if you are thinking, how could I make my money work for me a little bit harder so it's earning more, I would say that is worthy of your effort, Capricorn. You should think about that. You should not think about all of the traditional ways of making money. You should look at your own situation. And you should look at, you know, Capricorns live a long time. So you, you always have to sort of stretch out your timeline and think, how can I afford things <laughs> in the distant future? No matter what your age is, you should be thinking about that. Because uh, Capricorns, they, they tend to really make it for a long time. And so um, if you're living within your means and you can afford your lifestyle right now, what are you doing to make sure you can afford it when prices go up in the future? You know, what, what do you have? Do you have any source of income that just keeps growing? Uh, because if you don't, you, or, or an investment that just keeps growing. You should really think about that right now, Capricorn, because nothing beats a grand trine. And six planets there, wow. You know, and costs are going up everywhere. If you own something but it's costing you money, are you sure it's going to be worth it to hang on to it? I mean, you, if the costs never go down, Capricorn. They always go up. So do you have the kind of income that can back you as the costs go up? This does not mean that there would be anything left for you. It only means that an increase in income could cover higher costs. It doesn't exactly mean you're getting rich. You're just getting enough money to pay the higher costs. Um, so you need to really think about everything right now, Capricorn. And it, it may be that you can shift your money around in some way to have it work a little harder for you. And you should really pay attention to that while this grand trine is holding. Because uh, you would be successful in that. There's nothing wrong with making more money. <laughs> or having your money work for you instead of you having to work for it. Okay, what does it mean to a Capricorn? Hmm, Capricorn. I mean, it, I'm sorry, I meant Aquarius. What does it mean to an Aquarian? <laughs> and so Aquarius. There aren't any planets in the air signs right now, but that full moon in your sign last week, Aquarius, could more or less have highlighted uh, some sort of financial or career matter or uh, some sort of event a fun event of some kind uh, that would have something to do with um, sort of money and more of it. And that is because the Sun and Venus right now are opposing your Sun and Jupiter, Uranus and the exalted Moon in Taurus are squaring your Sun. So you still are suffering the effect of so many planets in fixed signs in harsh aspect. Uh, but there really isn't anything in your sign now, and there's nothing supporting your sign. So what can you do, Aquarius? Well, I would say not much. 
And that may be the best thing that you could do, is, is lay low and uh, take it easy and work on things around your home or in your job. Just try to be sort of silent Sam. Just, if you have to go to work, fine. Just do your job and then get out of there. Because there are still too many planets and fixed signs that can be challenging your sign. And your sign rules the future. So they're challenging your future. And <clears throat> if you can't see a better future for yourself and you just need more time to think about that, well then this is fine for thinking about your future. In fact, that would be preferable to you running into people that are challenging you. You shouldn't do that. Uh, because they, they could want to overpower you or override any suggestion you make. So I'm not saying that you should be talking a lot to people right now because there aren't any planets in air signs anyway. And, th and you know, air signs have a lot to do with communication. But there's, there are no planets there right now. So keep your thoughts to yourself, Aquarius. But, you know, you could plan a pretty good future or you could plan changes in your future and just not tell anybody right now. And you know, if you're thinking along those lines, I think that's exactly what you should be doing. You should be thinking about your future, and the number one question you should be asking yourself is, what, what would make me happy in the future? And uh, generally that's a pretty easy question to ask. Most people have the answer to that. They know what would make them happy in the future. And so then all you have to do is say, and, ha and how can I afford it? Or, or how can I get there? And this is a prime time for you to be thinking about that, Aquarius, because uh, you really do have a good future. It may not be on the horizon yet, but I'm telling you, it's right over the horizon. It's, it, it will be coming your way, Aquarius. And you may not be very prepared for your future right now. And this is a time when you need to really be thinking and asking yourself personal questions about what would make you happy in your future. And good time for you to come up with the answers, too. So good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Pisces? Well, Pisces. This is a time, Pisces, when you can be sort of uh, determined um, to get something right. And that is because... Saturn is in your sign, and it's a planet of time and of hard work and rewards earned over a long period of time. And your own ruler, Neptune, is in your sign. And, you know, you, you really have to pay attention to your dreams and to making them come true. And this would be a pretty good time for you to realize that there are people around you, Pisces, who represent irreconcilable differences. They really don't think the way you do. They don't even care about the way you think. They think everyone should think the way they think. <laughs> and so, irreconcilable differences. And so, you know, Pisces, you're a little bit more on your own right now, but you have very strong backup because Saturn is in your sign. Saturn is not happy in Pisces, because Pisces rules the ethers and the mists and the shadows and it rules the fog and it rules dawn and dusk. Things that are a little bit hard to see. And, um, and it rules dreams. And it rules things that are hidden behind the scenes. But Saturn there is a planet of reality. And uh, you know it's going to be in your sign for a couple more years, Pisces. And so uh, you may find that this is a pretty good time for you to realize you're on your own and you need to think seriously about what is right or who is right for you. And it isn't these people. It isn't the irreconcilable difference people. You know, if you haven't said goodbye to them, you're running a little late on that, Pisces. It should have been goodbye a long time ago. Uh, because uh, you have to be true to yourself and in your nature. It's a gentle nature. And um, you, you have to think seriously about uh, something that Pisces hardly ever considers. And it is uh, how long you're going to live. And, um, and how you're going to live. 
And if you have a precious dream, this is the time when it is destined to come true. But guess who has to make it come true? You do, Pisces. And you've got your ruler in your sign for the only time in your life really helping you with that. So believe in your dreams. And, and believe that you can make a difference. You can make them come true. You can at least try your best. And, you know, as long as you're trying not only to be at your best, but trying as hard as you can to make your own dream come true, then you have, you have given purpose to your life. And with a purpose in your life, you could probably surmount anything coming your way. You know, we have to have dreams. So don't spend all your time doing the everyday stuff, Pisces. Think about what your fondest dream is. And every day, try to do something that will make it come true. Even if you're only taking baby steps, or if you want to take a big step. It's giving purpose to your life. And it's your special dream. And that's, that's going to be just right for you. And so that will give your life meaning. And it's a meaning that you may not have. That's why it was always a dream. It's because you didn't have it in real life. But if anybody can make a dream come true, it's a Pisces. So good luck, Pisces. Give it your best shot. Because um, it will make you happier than you've ever been in your whole life. So it's going to be worth it. Don't give up. Keep going. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, you can see the show um, and subscribe to it on my Karen Campbell YouTube channel. And if you do that, I'd be happy to send it to you every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. And you can read the blog on my website, starborninstitute.org, because the blog every week uh, always explains a little bit more about the theme of the week's show in depth. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week. Bye.